Thanks very much, Jesus. Um, yeah, I'm the managing director of InnoCell, and InnoCell is an economic development agency of our city. So uh, the main point is why are we interested in, in projects like this? Um, like economic development agencies usually concentrate on the companies in the city. They help to, um, when they have any questions, when they want to build new buildings or if they have any anniversaries, you um, try to link uh, the city mayor together with the economies. But our, actually, our, um, we have um, a special field, we do projects uh, and we concentrate on linking companies together with schools and universities and try um, to encourage the students to think what about um, doing after school, what should we go for, Why, uh, and what are we interested in. So Phenome is actually one of our projects um, yeah, to interest students in their future, in, in their job profession. And as we have heard, um, interesting, encouraging students for science and technology is it's not only an, an, an aim or a goal for universities or for the European Commission, it's actually, it's our, we all are interested in the same goal. And what we try to do is we um, try to link um, schools, public administration, universities, research, research organization, and industry in our region together to go for the same go goal. And um, just to introduce our region, um, it's a region which is like Fran France, uh, Switzerland, and Germany. And we do have lots of companies, industrial companies, working mainly in the field of life science. We really have a, a real life science cluster, but we also have lots of other companies um, in the field of the automot automotive industry or information technology. We do have universities as well, and we do have lots of research institutes. And if you talk about um, our area, you always have to talk about the whole region, about all three countries. It's, it's a whole region and it doesn't stop at the border. So you always have to, um, to take the Swiss, Switzerland and France, um, you have to concentrate on, on the whole region. We all have the same problems. If um, the region has problems because of um, uh, companies uh, reduce their uh, jobs, then everybody is actually concerned with it. This is, this is Phenovum. Um, it's a student research center. It's located in Lörrach in Germany on a campus of three schools. And in, on this campus, there are 2,400 pupil students, but it's open to all pupils from Germany, France, and Switzerland. So, um, because as I said, um, it's a region and we all have the same problems and in other words, it's um, we all have um, like business and public and private research institutions need qualified research and development specialists um, to both safeguard and develop the location over the long term. And we have a history of textile companies, um, but because of the problems of the textile industry, um, we had, everybody had to solve the same problems and what we try to do is we encourage the students to go for um, science and technology. So we, our uh, student research center mainly concentrate on the age between four and 19 and try to educate them well and convince them also to stay in the region and not to move to other regions. Um, we also want to create an attractive range of educational offerings in the area of science and technology and to build up an active and three national network of pupils and teachers at schools in all the three countries. And for Novum, our student research center like functions like a hub. So um, these are the institutions today which are actually working together with us. So you can see um, 
it's also it's a city of Lohar. It's um, at the public. Um, it's it's the city hall. Uh, schools from our area, school from our cities, but also from German neighbor cities. But schools, uh, schools from Switzerland as well and from France. We also work together with University of Basel in Switzerland, but also with our own um, student uh, university in our city. And we do have like research, research centers, and but also the Department of the Education of the three countries who actually are linked in our network. And that's, main, that's probably the reason why it is um, as successful as it is. Um, so the financing also is um, scientific equipment um, is financed by foundations and donations of companies or uh, research institutes. And we also get, get um, money for, of the companies um, for the students to um, promote them. Um, it's also um, the teaching time, the time of the teachers we get from the state of Baden-Württemberg. Um, they work for schools, but then half of their job is to work for the Students' Re Research Center. And um, the city of Lora itself provides the building and also the management staff. Um, it's one and a half person who care, uh, meanwhile, for the Student Research Center. It was more the last uh, four years when we established the center, but now it's like on a permanent base. It's one and a half people. And between 2009 and 2012, we got also funding from the European Union um, with the program Interreg, which is a special program for regions um, like German, Switzerland, and Germany region. And we had 40 partners from each country and actually 17 co-financiers uh, who were attending our project. And also, because it's an association, all the students are members and they also pay a little amount, a little membership fee um, to, to link them more into the association. Um, the original, the tri like the hist history is we had um, three, um, three branches. Um, there was a physics club, which was very successful. Um, it was working in one of those schools. We also had um, called IT seminar. It was a two hours course at the university in our city. Uh, and we financed it, we economic development agency and a research center. And we did that since 2003. And we also had a very good life science network, um, network of life science teachers. And this was the beginning of the life science branch. So out of these, th the historical base, we founded uh, a non-profit association called Phenovum uh, in April 2007, and we have three departments. It's one is IT robotics, and the other one is biology, chemistry, and life science, and then the third one is physics and nanoscience. The target groups, we have actually three target groups, um, or four, you can say. Um, as you said, who are you going to, um, who do you want to interest? So there are pupils who already are very motivated, who already are very interested, but they don't get enough at their schools. They want to do more. They want to really go into research. They want to ask questions, really difficult questions. They're, um, they could actually, they, like, they already know, perhaps I'm going to do something with science, I'm going to study physics, and I'm already interested in, in difficult problems. So these are, we want to promote those motivated pupils, students, that they are, um, that we can give them more. They can prepare and do more, encourage them. Uh, but we also have those uh, students who are not already not interested in, in science or are interested a bit, but they don't trust themselves that much. They would not attend um, a difficult course. So we also um, try to promote, try to encourage those students that they are interested in science and technology. Then we also have the target group for students um, between um, six and 10. So this is our elementary schools, but they don't come to a student research center. For them, it's too complicated. So what we do is we go to the schools and then the other target group is our teachers. So we have special training sessions for teachers, special courses 
uh, for example, nanotechnology or programming. We do have networking events for them. We organize them that they can meet and exchange. We have trainings, um, really like, yeah, very intense trainings. And we also established a certificate course for educators, primary school teachers with the University of Northwestern Switzerland. Um, just to concentrate on the age group between 5, 6 to 10, um, it's to promote, to encourage just the young students. Um, they, ha they have seminars at schools in um, different topics. What we do is we, we train them. We train the teachers and we train parents. So what we discovered is usually as a teacher you have a class of um, 24, 30 students in front, of the, in front of you, but you have to do experiments with them. You have to work on some problems, but it's very difficult if the class is that big. So what we do is we try to encourage parents to come to the class, and we train parents and teachers at the same time and go to the class and split the class in small groups between four and six um, students, and then they do um, their experiments. And the main aim is that they are encouraged to ask questions, at as Vladimir said. We want, to, um, we want to them to ask questions, to think about science. And after f doing that for four years, it's sort of a curriculum, and then all the other schools after that can build on this base. Um, Students from the age of um, 10 and up, um, we have seminar courses on subjects, specific topics, two to three hours a week, and like uh, s for six weeks. So they can try different things. They can try, am I interested in biology? Am I interested in chemistry? Um, so the, for example, chemistry club or making magic with physics, make robots dance, nanoparticles and cosmetics. So these are like, um, Courses which should interest students because of the names are also, um, it's not very complicated, but it's a good step into it. And after six weeks, they know if they want to go to another course in the same field or if they want to change or if they're not interested at all. But actually what we discovered is if you, s if you start doing it, if you attended one course, it's very easy. Usually they go for another one. They stay at the center, they know the center, they know some friends, they, they got some friends there, and it's going to, uh, it's hip, and it's, it's, it's nice for them, and they go on, and they attend other courses. We also have uh, classroom courses, um, special workshops, a bit com more complicated one for the students which are in the age of 16. Um, for example, DNA fingerprinting. Um, so the whole class is coming to the student research center the first one is the students itself decide if they come or not. It's not, it's, it, they come from different schools. The second one is the whole class of one school is coming to the student research center. And we also have holiday courses, um, like scanning electrons, scanning tunneling micros microscopes, soldering courses, like very specific courses, very interesting. One for one week or only three days, and they're very popular as well. Um, and then the other target group is the as I said, the motivated pupils, um, and they mainly prepare and participate in competitions in small teams. Um, they are like young researchers. You probably have the same contest here in Spain or um, in other countries. And they also go to international contests. They go to the International Young Physicists Tournament or international, uh, international com competition for young scientists, or Quanta, which is in India, or then they have the, the different Olympics like physics Olympics or mathematics Olympics. And these motivated pupils are prepared. They really do, like they, their, their work is, you can, usually you can compare the work, the, the experiments with the work you do at university. It's like if you are at university, like a second year at university, it's the same, um, the same um, behavior, the same work. Um, other uh, things we do is we do field trips to scientific institutions and companies. 
um, we also try to place students, pupils who are interested in companies and ask uh, companies if they're interested in students and try to link them together. Um, we also organize regional competitions. One is for um, robotics, it's the Fenobot. We just developed a very new competition, it's called Metaxi. Um, I do have some brushes with me if you're interested in. Um, this special competition, this new one, is interdisciplinary uh, for students of the region. Um, it's between the countries, between schools and between students. Um, there are different categories. Um, there's a um, category debate, a category art, uh, construction, and it's also a quiz in logic, science, and mathematics. So it's not only to address the science interested students, also to, to get the students who are more interested in art, but to link them all together. They have to solve a problem, but you need different know-how, different skills, and um, this competition will be November 6th, so it's the first time we do that, but it's, um, the example for it was um, the international uh, contest in India, and we wanted to have something similar in our area. And the aim is to arouse uh, the students' enthusiasm uh, for competitions and also to have the chance to demonstrate their knowledge in a competition and also to support the inter-exchange between the country's schools. And let's see what happened, but um, lots of student schools actually in our area are very interested in. Um, we also have uh, workshops for school corps. Um, Sometimes we have an open house and you can have a look inside. We have, do, we have lectures. Um, we also participate in scientific events and we have like peer, peer courses, like stu uh, students encourage other students um, to do something. And this actually works very well because it's like students of the same age are, have their topic. They're very interested in one issue and it's, for them, it's more easy to encourage other students to be interested in the same thing. So it's many cooperative arrangements with schools, and um, this all works for the same goal. So here are some prize winners. Um, as I said, Jugend Forsch, that's the, the, the national competition. And the last couple of years, uh, we always had winners um, in the national contest. We have, an, an, and also on the first first place in the state competition, um, for example, Johannes, um, he, his topic was self-healing in plants under the microscope, or Marcel and Leonard, the candle lift. So they, they both, he got, um, they both got a, a, a first place in the state competition, and um, Johannes got a first place and um, Marcel and Leonard a second place in the national competition. We had a total of four projects and they were all very good. And also then there's another contest, an, an, a national contest, which is for the students between the age 9 to 14. The Jugend Force is between 14 and 19 and we have lots of uh, students who were in first place, for example, was the issue sailing stones or deodorants, poison or useful health aid, or the G how whammy duddle. I, it's a translation, but I can't really say it's, uh, yeah. But as I said, we don't have only the aim to motivate the very motivated students. We want to motivate and encourage all the students. And as you can see, we started with a little amount of students in 2007. And now we have 145 members, student members in our association. Um, and some more who are not a member, but attend the courses. And it will definitely be more in the next couple of um, years. What we realize it, it's going to, if, if some students are attending the course, they're really enthusiastic about it. And as you go, you go to a sports club and you're enthusiastic and you tell your friend, oh, I'm, going, I'm, I'm playing basketball and it's really, it's great. Come on, join me. We, go, bo we both go to the basketball club and it's the same here. Um, they realize it's, it's, it's great, it's, it's nice, they have fun 
And then they asked their friends, why don't you come with me to the Phenovum? Um, we can both join the course, and it's nice, and it's fun. You learn a lot, but it's also fun. And um, it's getting like um, hip, and it's like um, um, among the students in Lörrach, they know that there is the Phenovum, and it's like increasing uh, motivation of them to come. The other numbers are the passive numbers and institutional members who are, yeah, who tr also finance. So activities for pupils, we have a number of courses. It's increasing as well, 20 courses. Um, we had 244 um, pupils in the courses and um, 32 classroom courses. So uh, in all the classroom courses last year, we had 539 pupils. Um, and also we have now 32 peop students who are engaged in the project work, the work who is going to lead to the contests. Um, we have field trips, um, and then the one is not right. It was 12 who attended the field trip before, and now it's 14. So the number of pupils reached in those courses are 829. But as I said, we have lots of other events, like um, open house, and there are lots of students and parents coming to the phenomenon, much more than this, the number of here. Um, we started, a year ago, we started to do some evaluation of the courses of Phenovum. I just um, took four shards um, out of the whole um, evaluation. We have questioned 93 students, and we asked them, how much fun did you have during your Phenovum course? And as you can see, like 60% said very good, and 33 said good. So what we discovered, you have to have fun. I mean, it has, it's, it's not school. You, 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 it's... You have your free time, you could play basketball, you could play your violin, you could just be on the street and play soccer, but you take your free time as a student and go to this phenomenon and you have to have fun. And also, how do you rate the expertise of your course instructor? I mean, is it, is it good? Is it, does it give the information? And 75% said it's very good and 22 good. Um, and then we also asked the question, do you have stronger interest in the field of science and technology after your Phenovum course? And 67% said yes, and 24 said no, but there were five maybe, and I think it's a good rate. Um, it's after one course, so it could be after six weeks, and some of them were attending courses for three months, so it could be after three months. And, and after finishing your education, do you want to work in a job being related to science and technology? And 73% of the students said yes, um, which is a very good amount of students. Yeah, what does it, as I said, we are financed by companies of the region, and what does it mean? We have two different models. One model is the patronage, so it's, uh, they provide a funding for pupil from Germany, France, or Switzerland to participate. Um, they are named in our homepage, and the program, of course, the newsletter and um, we do give them a donation receipt um, but there are also sponsorship models and these are the models for the companies who really want to work together with us in a, in a close relationship um, they can send an employee to our Phenovum to be a teacher in one of those courses um, they can invite Phenovum to their companies to their um, employee events and we go there and give courses for the students there um, and they're different models, bronze, silver, and gold, as much as you pay. So, um, yeah, we do join press releases. So the thing is, there has to be a win-win rela relationship. That's why we offer, like, a really sponsor model. And um, this started a year ago, and um, the companies are now very interested in this model. Before, they had the patronage model, and they're more interested in the sponsor model. Some of the companies, you probably know some names like Novartis and Roche, which are, um, they have their ben, uh, companies in our area. But they're also very small companies who contribute to the Phenovum. You, so you can find more information on our website. Um, it's also um, in English and mainly actually in, in German and French. And I do have um, the program of last year here in German and French. Um, the new program from this year is already on the website, but it is the print comes tomorrow, and I couldn't bring it over uh, to the
Congress. But um, if you're really interested in, I'm going to send you one. We also have a newsletter four times a year in German and French. So if you're interested to get the new information about everything, you can just order it. Um, or you can just ask me after the talk. Yeah, some pictures only to give you an imagination. Um, it's very encouraging if you see um, the students uh, sitting at the table and ask questions and um, it has to be normal to do something in science and technology. It's very normal to do sports, to, to play an instrument, but it's getting normal to do science and um, as I told Vladimir, it's, it's, I, I really appreciated his, his talk and his sheet which is like we have to interest the students asking questions. Um, they have to learn how to ask questions and it's very easy to ask a question about why is the stone sinking into the water um, instead of asking questions why do we have this uh, why do we have this problem in the society so it's easier to interest um, them about science and to lead them to a very like um, motivated and uh, student um, and we should take this chance and do we try to encourage them to do more and just to ask the questions in science. Yeah, some more pictures. And if you have some questions, you can. Thank you, Diana. I have time for a couple of questions. Hi, uh, Diana. Uh, I'm a fan of this project and uh, I want to know why are uh, companies, um, even more in a region with, with unemployment and with a, in a crisis context, why are they interested in investing in this project? Because, I mean, I don't think that a logo or a press release can be a reason for investing in a project like this. Why do they invest? Yes, in yes. It, why is the back reason or yeah. the, the deepest reason? There's no law. I mean, they do that because they, they like it. They like the idea. And um, we do have uh, in Germany a, a lack of um, high educated, well educated, not high, well educated students, uh, well educated workers. Um, we try to find educated people. It's, Probably in Spain you have lots of educated people and you're looking for the job. We, in Germany it's a bit <laughs> the other way around. So we we need more um, well-educated uh, yeah students, people, workers, and that's the main aim to to have good educated, well-educated um, students in the future. Because if they don't get any other any workers, then um, the companies will not succeed and they, if they don't find any in our regions, they will move the companies to Spain, I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, we want to, them to, to stay in the region. We want them to not to move to other regions and that's why we do all, uh, these efforts and, this, and the, the, the companies also think the same. So it's an invest in future. But they invest, they give us the money, but they don't give, it, give the money to one student and they say this student is going to be our employee. Um, we can link them together if they're really interested in people, they can be on our, in, they can have, they can introduce them on our events, they can have a little table and let's say I'm this company and I offered you this kind of education. But if a student is not interested, he's not going to be an employee of this company. So it's more like an idealistic view or idealistic uh, a hope that this will lead to future employees. And it's probably also that we convince them that it's, we have all have to work together in this aim. It's not only a question of schools or the ministry. We all have to work for the same go goal. Thank you. I think Vladimir have one question and here you... <coughs> Thank you, Diana. It was really fascinating what you guys are doing. Um, in terms of unemployment, I was just thinking that the EU 
uh, has one of the four freedoms is the movement of capital and people, and everybody has the right to work wherever there is a job. But anyway, my question is different. Mm, did you conduct any interviews with those students who did not, who expressed, because I saw that nearly one third of them said they were no, they are not more interested in uh, uh, in science and technology after participating. Is it because they were interested already and simply said that there was no added value, or um, or they did not find it interesting in the beginning? So because it, then I saw that the numbers for the people who are interested in pursuing careers is higher, it's 73%. Uh, so I was wondering if you'd conduct anything more to f see what the effect was on the, um, on the attitudes. Thank you. Yeah, we have just, um, that the evaluation is just uh, two weeks old, so that's the next question we have to, uh, we were pretty surprised actually about the 25% as well, but I think it's a question. Um, the whole questioner is concentrating on the course they have attended. So I think it's um, the course, they're not interested in the topic anymore. That's what it's uh, said. But I think we have to precise the question to the, for the next questionnaires to, to know if it's the course or if it's science in general. It's not price, uh, precise enough and we have to ask another question. Is that what we really rea realized because we wanted to work on it we don't accept the 25 percent, so we have to. Oh, 30 percent, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello, hello. I have a doubt, maybe because I don't understand well. Uh, all are all of these activity extracurricular activities? And if so, um, do they have any connection with academic curricula? Maybe, yeah, because you, in that, in your foundation, do you realize a lot of activities, course, mm -hmm. but if, if I don't understand wrong, are extracurricular, no? Uh, yeah. Young people go there in summer or like a club, all of them. Mm -hmm. And if so, yes, which is the, or do you try to connect them with cur official curricula or, and also another thing that I don't understand well is uh, teachers uh, who participate in these uh, experiences, do they get a, a certificate or from the university, like uh, an extra value for teachers because for, um, Normally, it's, sometimes it's very difficult to imply teachers in this, this kind of activities because they, they have a lot of job, uh, the normal job, and also, well, that more or less, this, this question. Do you, how do you connect with teachers? Mm -hmm. And also, uh, if you plan with teachers uh, connections between these activities mm -hmm. and ac official or academical mm -hmm. curricular activities? I it's don't know if I explain no, no, it's okay. The, the phenomenon is extracurricular. It's usually in the afternoon, except the classroom courses. The classroom courses, the teacher of a school attends with the whole class. The phenomenon that's on it's in, in the morning, but everything else, all the other courses are extracurricular. But um, because we work together with schools, um, some of the some of the courses, mainly the project work. Um, we do have, um, in our schools, we do have, um, in the last couple of years, it's called GFS. You have to write, you have to do a project work at school. You can choose your topic, you can choose the subject, you can, but you have to do a project. As a student at school, you have to do this. It, it comes to, it, it's, it's, you get a grade and it comes into the certificate at the end of the school year. And what is possible, if you attend one of those courses or if you do the project work, you can take this work and give it to the school and then this is your project work. So what, most of the students, if they're really interested, if they have, if they've done a project work, they use it as the GFS and give it back to the school. So all the work they have done, they get a grade and they can 
like it's not without any like it's it's not for nothing and uh, what we also like um, on one of those schools we have um, an experiment some of the students are very good I mean they're they could go to university uh, study chemistry first year so some of them can actually drop the chemistry lessons if they tell the teacher that they go to the phenomenon and they do the project work, they don't have to attend the chemistry class. But then it's a very, it's a special relationship with one school and it's an experiment and it works quite well because they do lots more, lot more here at phenomenon than in a at school. And um, the work and all the papers go go to the school and then they get the grade for the for the work at Phenomenum and not at school. It's an experiment, but it works very well. Not all of the schools are doing it, but we try to establish it. It's for the very motivated uh, students. Um, your other questions about teachers. Um, it's a special program. Um, usually in Germany, a teacher has 26 hours, school hours. And here they can like we have, uh, some of the teachers have six hours at Phenobum and they don't have to do, like they only have to do the 20 hours at school. So in each year, there are different contracts. One is having 12 hours at Phenobum and then 14 hours at school. <coughs> so um, we have a certain amount of hours of the state government and we give those hours to the teacher and then they can reduce the workload at school. But two hours at school is much less than two hours of a normal work because it's very individual, you have to prepare better. Um, so these teachers are very motivated, they're very idealistic. Um, and the question is how do you find them? Um, <laughs> uh, we work together with one of those schools. Most of the teachers come from one school on the campus and they just convinced that this is a good idea. And mo so lots of students of Phenomenum are their, their students. And they get, they just tell us they get more of these courses than at school because they're very interested in motivate students and they see how they are in, in, in how they're motivated. Um, it's, we do have very motivated teachers at the phenomenon, and that's actually a very important point. If the teacher is not motivated, you don't get the students. So if it's a good teacher, I don't say anything you, but if it's a good teacher, you get the students.